are not what they seem <laughs> <laughs> all right discord Hello? wow Hello. <laughs> we just saw you bouncing around making the floor here bounce it was a little discerning there going Ooh, he's bouncing floor is going with it <laughs> what's happening what we're are you guys doing now we're sweaty and disheveled <laughs> having just played on here moments ago but after that, we're back to recording the fourth album, yeah. the preposterous fourth album <laughs> <laughs> that we thought we'd maybe never make, mm. but it's happening. And I understand that it's a slight departure in some, time, some pieces yes. from the norm, what we've come to expect from a Discord album. I suppose we always wanted to be the kind of band where you wouldn't say something to expect from Discord. We want it to be odd and, and bizarre <laughs> and un, unpredictable. But I think we've taken that to the nth degree with this, with this record. Um, so around about two years ago, Zowie and I started writing a novel together. Um, we made a short film called Comic Crescent. It's on YouTube, go and watch it. It's, it's very good. Rachel McGladdery is terrifying in it. Yes. She's absolutely wonderful. Um, and at the time, that was completely separate to Discord. And at the, and at the same time, we were wondering what we were going to write, what we were going to write about. And then somehow this idea came of just combining the two projects and it was suddenly all there just waiting to happen. And we came up with the idea of an album that was the soundtrack to the book. Now, it's um, the book and the album called Common Crescent. And it's set in the late 90s which is when, you know, when I was a teenager, falling in love with alternative music. So it was jammed full of pop culture references or alternative references. And we went through and said, instead of name checking all these bands that we grew up with, let's rewrite the songs. Let's do the songs ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we came up with this idea, mainly because nobody stopped us. <laughs> like <laughs> people may, maybe need to stop us yeah. but we're, we're unbound so we're unbound. There's, yeah. there's no stopping no, no. so the idea so. yeah so we thought we've you know we, we could write another album of punk songs but we've done that and we're proud of them we love them we, we play them constantly yeah. and it's great now three albums in recording the fourth to be at a point where with a set list it's hard to know what to pick and what to drop and we didn't even play seaside suicide tonight uh, that yeah. was just what i was going to say you drop seaside suicide yeah. that was a surprise yeah. a yes. controversial move yeah it was but we played animals in the palace from the first album true and we played director's cut which is going to be right. on the new album yeah. um but yeah we thought well, it's a bit like if you go for a meal and have a pizza and then you order ice cream nobody says hang on hang on why aren't you having pizza again <laughs> you, you have pizza, you do the pizza. He said, yeah, we, we had it, it was great. Now it's time for something else. And that was kind of where we were. And it was that sort of, well, do we call it a day? Do we start a new project? And thought, well, no, because Discord is, is worth more than that. Mm. And it was always about us sort of pushing ourselves creatively. And, uh, and we thought, okay, so if Bowie could change his persona for every album, you know, today I'm, I'm an alien, today, you know. We can change our persona for every song. Mm -hmm. So we came up with this idea where each track on the album would be a different genre and we would adopt a different persona. Sometimes that means um, switching up what we do, trying to sing in a different style. I've really pushed myself. Zowie's taken on lead vocals on this album. Jake's playing guitar. I'm playing drums a bit. Dave's been playing all manner of different guitars. Got 12 strings, got nylon strings playing around with effects pedals just to really sort of push ourselves pointy things, <laughs> pointy things. Uh, pushing ourselves to the, the limit of what we thought discord was to try and find out and we said well do we risk breaking it do we risk doing something where we don't sound like us anymore or do we do we risk doing something that we can't do that we're not competent enough and, and there's a temptation to stay in your comfort zone but we're a punk band mm -hmm. you know it doesn't matter if we're playing ukuleles or 12 string guitars or doing acapella harmonies we're a punk band be because we don't give a fuck 
<laughs> and that is what punk is all about. It's yeah. just being yourself and being true to you. So we thought no comfort zone. No. In fact, the comfort zone is not allowed with, the, with this album. We would just push and push to create something. And ultimately, it stemmed from the fact that we had something to say that we believed in, which was, which was the book. Yeah. yeah, like the book basically, like Chris saying, two years ago, we started writing something together. Mm. Um, a lot of people know, some people don't, that um, me and Dave are married, um, Chris is my brother-in-law, so mm. it's a family affair. Yeah. Um, and, and Jake, <laughs> basically, <laughs> we, we've, he's, a, he's, an, yeah, he's adopted brethren, but <laughs> what we've discovered, especially doing this album, is there is a real hive mind thing going on. Mm -hmm. So the sort of synergy I know that sounds really pretentious, but we can think something and Jake will do it. You know, like he already knows, like, because it makes sense to him. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what genre of music we play or what instruments each one of us plays or who's singing lead. It's still discord because it's this collective idea and love of music and love of each other mm -hmm. that really pushes everything forward. Right. And basically, when it came to the story... Chris and I have really just poured our very souls into the project and it's completely fucked up and I'm really sorry but I'm sorry yeah like it's it's really strange and beautiful and odd and nostalgic and it's just essentially like everything we've been doing recently it's about love um, and I think it really comes through and with the album like Chris said, it was more of why don't we create a soundtrack to this project and that would be the fourth album. Um, so it's going to be really strange, but we've, I don't think we've ever enjoyed making music as much as we have with this one. Is it just the diversity of everybody doing different things and playing different instruments that's yeah, got you yeah. or the styles? I think, the, you know, we talk about how different this album is and how exciting and I think probably the main difference, we're going on about, oh, we're pushing ourselves, we're adopting personas, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're, doing, we're writing novels, and people will think, yeah, you always did that. <laughs> You're just doing it more now. Yeah. Probably the biggest difference with this album is that Jake is producing it, yeah. as well as writing and recording it with us. So, so how has that been? Has that been a massive challenge for you? Or? Uh, more work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, but... Yeah, it, it was something I was studying in university and it's I've, I've been wanting to set up my own studio for a few years, just never had the money to, and I've, I've got it now, so Discord gets to be the guinea pig of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty it's a it, good thing, yeah. Yeah, it bookends the process, because it starts with, with, usually with me and Dave and an acoustic guitar, uh, or uh, this time, me and Zowie and a, a blank piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> and it evolves, then we get into the studio and we thrash it out as a band together, and now there's that final stage where, where Jake's involved and it really makes it more collaborative and more of like like you say like a family thing and if this is sounding a bit nice I think it's important to mention <laughs> at this stage that the novel and the soundtrack are horror and I wanted to talk to you more than anybody about this because the last interview we did you said the two things you got from discord yeah. uh, were, were politics and horror and yeah, you absolutely knew, you always knew yeah. and I think with this album like War or Peace, our third album, felt very definitive for us. It was a statement about how we felt about politics and about war and about humanity and death and love. And you think, well, where do you go from there? Yeah. And it's a bit like, uh, you know, when you're complaining about something and, you, uh, and you're only going to get so far and you say, you know what? Get me the manager. So this is us. We, 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 we've taken <laughs> on... the manager. Yeah, we've taken on governments. We've taken on politicians and, and, and armies. And now we're... You know what, now we're taking on Satan, because it's ultimately his fault. We're taking this right to the top, or the bottom, really. It all um, depends on your perspective. Yeah, it does, yeah. And it's, but it, in, in all seriousness, um, it's an album of, of duality and trying to find the balance in that and good and evil. And it's taking those themes from War or Peace. Like we mentioned last time, we had some gorgeous limited edition tarot cards made, mm -hmm. especially. Yes, they were Beautiful. And oh, I love them so much. Mark Hetherington, the artist who did them, I really hope he's going to be involved. Mm. Well, we've already spoken. He is going to be involved <laughs> yeah, with this with Good. this new album. Uh, and it was it was bizarre. It was like taking those tarot cards and the characters in them, the soldier and the devil 
and death and, and telling their story. Yeah. I mean, literally telling their story. And then that was wonderful sort of as, as writers to be able to, 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 to pour so much of ourselves into this because it's incredibly autobiographical. Yeah. But then as musicians to say, well, we've, told, we've, we've written this story now let's sing about it, let's, let's play it, let's make it. Because we've always said, um, this goes back to the wakes, you know, we put so much effort and emphasis, effort into the artwork and emphasis on it. And uh, my wife painted the cover for us with the gas mask. Mm. And I'd love that, I absolutely love that. It just sums up what Discord is. Um, and we always, always have the lyrics in the booklets because that's, it's important for us that, you know, we might be shouting, but it's important for people to know what, what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, and with, you know, we said it's, it's the album, not just a song, not just a poem. It's, it's a complete piece of art. It incorporates everything. And this time we're, yeah, we, we, it's not just, not just poetry. There is an, an entire novel. Uh, there is a short film. There's going to be artwork. There's, there, there's music. <laughs> and do you guys everything. plan to release the novel as a package with the album? A, a full package, yeah. A hardback book with a CD in it. But then there'll be a download. We're going to do an audio book. Mm -hmm. ebook whatever wow. format you want yeah wow. so you can either pay lots of money for the most beautiful album you'll ever own <laughs> or next to nothing for a download because we've always you know it's never been about money for us yeah. we just want to share our art with people we just want to connect with people so it's there i've always been very proud that we have our our stuff all of our stuff on bandcamp and mm -hmm. now spotify and everything so it's there for people who want to hear it yeah. it's all on youtube it's free but if and we found that when we were starting out, we were kind of, we were pouring all our money into it, weren't we? We, we were losing money, but that was okay because we were doing what we loved. Most people pour money into, I don't know, cars. What, what do people do? I don't, I don't know. Football games. Football, yeah. yeah. Um, and now we're at that incredible stage where we're actually breaking even. We can just about, and um, we found that there's been this real switch sort of culturally in terms of uh, people wanting physical music. Uh, and we, we find that, you know, you can, as long as you have you have it available to the masses, the select few who really want something special are prepared to buy it, which, yeah. and for us, we basically funded War or Peace on um, pre-orders. Yeah. And that was amazing to know that people wanted not just the music, but they wanted to have the lyrics in front of them. They wanted artwork, they wanted, you know, and there's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot to tie in with this album for those who want it. And it's all there for free for people who, yeah. Yeah, who just want the music yeah. and, you know. Absolutely. But the music, I've only heard two songs. Yeah. And what a dichotomy. <laughs> wow. Um, do all of the songs fall into a different all genre? All that different, yeah. Um, the one you heard tonight, Director's Cut, is, mm -hmm. a, is a Discord track. We're not completely yeah. abandoning <laughs> Discord. Um, and there'll be a couple of other Discord tracks on the album, but for the others, the track you've heard is uh, A Wonderful Discovery of Witches, yes. performed by the Never Dead, uh, which is, we couldn't decide what genre it was. I think we've invented a genre. It's called Witch Folk. I don't know if that came across. Medieval Witch Folk. Medieval Witch Folk, yeah. Um, yeah, well, we, we're going for a bit of a Wicker Man vibe, I think, with that. Okay. Although more, more, of a, more of a Lancashire vibe, obviously, because it's, it's <laughs> yeah. about the, the Pendle Witch Trials. Yes, so. <laughs>
and in terms of pushing the sound, uh, like I say, I think some people might be surprised to hear Zowie's vocal on that one because it's like nothing you've done in the band before. And also, we've got my dad playing on it. My dad plays mandolin on that track. Oh my gosh. Lots, yeah, lots of other guest appearances on the album. So I shall keep up my sleeve for now, but a, a vast array of instruments and uh, yeah. So I can't ask my next question, which is, what are the in- other instruments you guys will be having on it? Um, ooh, I'm not going to tell you all of them. Okay. Uh, we've, we've, we've got ukulele. We've got uke on there. Uh, and there are going to be some um, slightly more electronic tracks on there. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and well, if you're going back to the 90s, it was very exactly. electronic era. Yeah, sort of programmed drums in that sort of uh, jagged little pill kind of yeah. vein. <laughs> um, or and that sort of garbage, Republica, that kind of... I didn't. It wasn't. I wasn't aware that they were programmed when I was twelve. And then you listen back, you think this sounds. This sounds really bad. <laughs> so how do you replicate that, but with with sincerity? Yeah, so that. that's the that's that's the fine balance to tread because it's not you know being nostalgic is all very well and good, but it has to be relevant. And I think, yeah, the vast uh, swathes of the book are set in the nineties, but a lot of it's set in the forties as well. Um, so there's a lot kind of it's about Britain in a way and its people, but mainly it's it's about good and evil and it's you know, it's all metaphorical or allegorical, whatever you want to it's 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 about now. It might be set in the past, but it's very much It's about very now. much what's happening today. Yeah, yeah. What was the most difficult instrument that you ended up having to play? <laughs> uh, the twelve string is the most difficult instrument I had to play. Um <laughs> It's just a lot more work on the fingers because you're using double sets of strings and stuff. And the bit that I wrote was a bit more, uh, a bit more interesting <laughs> than writing a hardcore punk song, which you <laughs> get a lot of thrashy um, power chords, and then you just go with that. Um, yeah, playing a lot of a, a melody on a twelve string was the most ambitious thing so track. far. <laughs> so far, we've not written all the tracks yet, so I'll say so far. <laughs> Can I just say as well? I'm talking about good and evil and the devil. I think that David is possessed. Mm. Because um, witches, that you heard, uh, a wonderful discovery of witches, it's melodies like that. Mm. We'll be sat writing a song, like thinking about writing a song, and then he will just start playing that. There's no like sitting there working it out. He'll literally, it will just fall out of the cosmos into his head yeah. and even he's just like well, I don't know like I don't know I'm just so doing it again. Uh, what, what did again? I do yeah. play what again I was just sat here <laughs> <laughs> playing and not paying attention the, yeah the old ones have spoken through him <laughs> Come from it. so I'm just you're a conduit absolutely yeah, he's yeah. a vessel that's a vessel yeah um I'm um, just really yeah I think we did <laughs> we're the conjurers and he's the conduit yeah. I think that's it but yeah I'm massively proud of all of us like mm-hmm. seeing how much we've just developed mm-hmm. um but especially of dave because just like the writing on this album like every song is a challenge it's something different mm-hmm. you know there's even sort of big band kind of elements in there and really really different things and he has just risen to that challenge every time and it's got my favorite songs on it basically <laughs> <laughs> and do you think you'll be playing some of your more I'm going to call them experimental <laughs> yeah. uh, songs during your sets. Yeah. Um, it would be really lovely to play the album in its entirety, which would be a very kind of, you couldn't do that at a hardcore punk night. No. Um, and it would, it would probably be, a, be very difficult for you guys as well. Yeah, but I'd still love to do it, to play it. It would be a very select <laughs> night, very diverse. Um, but uh, talking of 90s music, I was, I was really into a band called Manson when I was, when I was in my teens. And their first album, it, there's a lot of programming on there. There's sort of, you know, there's drum loops, there's, there's synth, there's keyboard. And I think that was because they, they were a band that kind of evolved in the studio. And they made this album and then they sort of sat down and said, ah, we can't, we can't play this live. We, we can't afford to take it all this. So I read an interview with them where they described their set as playing punk rock covers of their own songs, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, so some, some of these tracks, I think we will play them depending on the situation, depending on the context that we play them, I think some of them will be punk rock covers of our own songs. Because that's what's really interesting, that every song we've ever written, but the first ever Discord practice, we got in a studio, we got the drums out, we, we 
we detuned the guitar, didn't we? Drop D, turn the amps up for about five seconds and said, this is horrible. <laughs> so what we've always, so we've always done punk rock covers of our own songs. We, we, went, we just went back to the flat and got the acoustic out. We always write our songs, even the, the really, you know, the, the heavier ones that don't sound particularly melodic. There is a melody and there's, they, they're very... Um, Your they, songs are definitely melodic, even yeah. if, the, yeah. Um, so they start off like, it's literally just a voice and a guitar. Um, and you can, it was, we were just playing around the other night, playing some of our old songs, just acoustic, just mm. to see like, we could do this. <laughs> we probably wouldn't, but we could. Um, Discord unplugged. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, but yes, yeah, so it's always felt. Dave's liking yeah. this idea. You ready for that? We could definitely do something like that. Yeah. If somebody wants to pay us to do that, that'd be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, like I say, it depends on the context of the gig. Yeah, we'll yeah. play. I, I would love to play the new album in its entirety at the right show. Yes. But um, every, every, every time we play live, we're doing hardcore punk versions of our songs, which I always kind of think of fundamentally as, as, as acoustic and melodic. So it'll be no different in that respect. But this is really, like with the album, our live shows are so intense um, in terms of, because I can get off stage and literally sort of shout in people's faces and get people up on stage and people sort of, depending on the mood, there's either the, the shoving or there's hugging and there's community and it's really, yeah. whereas on a record, you don't have that immediacy. So we've always kind of, we've always striven for different ways to create that intensity, which is why even on our previous albums, there's lots of samples, there's lots of layered, like we put a lot of effort into the chance to try and make the album sound like we do live with a room full of people singing along. This is just taking that to its logical conclusion with like, well, how can we be more intense? <laughs> and even if it's 12 string guitar and, and harmonies, or I, I like to think, it's, um, I don't want it to be an, an album that you would call easy listening. I want it to be weird and intense. Yeah. <laughs> we were out of, that effect on people. Yeah, we were out of our comfort zones writing it, so I certainly wouldn't want anyone to be in their comfort zone listening to it. <laughs> that makes sense. Zoe, will you be doing vocals more? Um, maybe. Like, <laughs> I really enjoyed doing it. Um, it was a, a huge deal for me, really. Um, because my grandfather was a singer and it's always been something I've wanted to do um, but you know love the bass and it was quite a nerve-wracking experience doing a duet with Chris basically yeah I um, can imagine and it was even just like the early days of him just saying oh just sing like this and the, like the projection he's able to get with his voice because of just he's so um, used to it and he's he's honed that skill and people seem to think that that is a shouting exercise and that is not the case at all um, there's a lot of skill that goes involved in that so um, when I started singing I was thinking oh my god I can't I can't get the volume I, where is this so yeah it, it, it's harder than it seems um, and then the song that you've heard that I'm singing on that's a character okay but it was okay because a Lancashire character and I happen to be from Lancashire. So that was handy. Um, and it was quite interesting just singing something you've written because then you hear your own accent. Um, and whenever you sing, you know, like singing along to something, you sing, tend to sing in their accent and their style. Definitely. When you start singing and you hear your own voice, you think, oh, is that, is that how I sound? Is that how I speak? So that was... That was pretty amazing, and I really, really enjoyed it. And just recording it, they were all were all in the room together. And Jake's, you know, the recording engineer. And he, honestly, I have a bad experience with recording engineers. Um, I just recording in general, I get really bad sort of performance anxiety and all of that. And it is literally just the best experience I've ever had is recording with Jake. He just puts me right at ease. It's just fantastic. And I remember them sat, they were sat in the corner and I had my back to them thinking, don't look at me, let me just do the thing. Um, the yeah, let me just face the wall. I'm just, I'm just gonna be in the zone. And I remember turning around and they were like, <laughs> and it was that kind of family element of that, like, it's fine, they've, they've got my back, it's absolutely fine. And basically, all three of them helped me achieve one of my lifelong goals. So I hope I do sing more. <laughs> you do. And, and I think that's a pretty fantastic thing yeah. that you guys as a family yeah. really have brought out extra things inside of each other. Yeah. 
Do you think this has really just brought you guys closer together as the band? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, just kind of over there, the quiet <laughs> one. The drummer is yeah. always the quiet one. <laughs> Loudest instrument, quietest voice. <laughs> That's it. That's it. But yeah, like I said, so, I mean, I've known Zoe, what, like oh, 20 years or something. Like, yeah. we're, she's literally my sister. Um, and I said to her, after we did that song, I said, I feel like I know you more. I know you a bit better now. I've heard you sing just, you know, unaccompanied in that kind of raw... It, yeah, it's, it, is, it sounds trite, but it's the bearing of the soul. Yeah. And that's what, that's what Discord's always been when we're sat around, and it's always been raw, and um, we've never sat down and said, oh, let's write a song that's like this. It's just been, I want to do this. Like, I, I, I need to say this. Yeah. I need to express this, this whatever it is. And it was funny, like, writing the book when we started, it was just incredibly personal. You know, I couldn't have written it with anybody else. You had to know somebody very well to kind of to be that honest with them because it sat. It started. We we just sat down. We said, "Let's write something." There was no real agenda at first. Let's write something just horrible. Let's write something really, really horrific. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, because nothing else was horrific enough. We kept being disappointed by things. Said, "No, let's write something that's really properly scary." So we just sat, sat down and made a list of the the most horrific things that had ever happened to us. <laughs> Uh, bottle of rum and, and then we looked at this list and said that's a story and it was so weird because it's a different medium but writing the book was just like writing a discord album wasn't it it's like this is what we this is who we are and this is what we need to say this is what we need to express and it was all there and it was and then a friend read a very early draft of it and he said reading the experience I get from reading this is the same as the experience I get from hearing Discord, it's like the same thing. And that was a, that was a moment of thinking. That yeah. probably uh, was the, yeah. where everything started to fall together and fall yeah. into place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, well, I can't wait to hear this whole album. Yeah. It, I think it's... I'm more excited than any project before to get this out and share it with people. Yeah. Like God knows what they'll think of it, but <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> because we, when we first started, like we didn't know that anyone would even listen to the wakes, let alone buy it. Buy and it. then. But yeah, seven years later and people are still coming to watch us and still buying new music. And exactly. I think we owe, obviously we owe it to ourselves to push ourselves and create new things, but we owe it to the people who come to see us too. You know, they, they know they'll never get anything ordinary with Discord. Definitely, <laughs> never ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be an insult. <laughs> wow, thank you guys. I can't well, wait to you. hear the whole thing yeah. and to see more yes. because I think you're going to keep creating in this type of vein. It's, it's coming, yeah. yeah. It's unbound now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's been unleashed. Yeah. So, thank you all very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Peace over. Peace over.